everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the BRICS PLC shifting instructions. And PLC shifting instructions involve movement of bits within the memory area, a fixed amount of space. Now bits are either on or off, or one or zero, and are usually associated with together to form a memory location. Now what you'll notice is I'm currently connected to my BRICS PLC through my USB programming port, which is located right here. And up on my screen here, I have my uh, ladder logic, I have my data monitoring, and I have my project browser open. And what you'll see is, um, what we'll do is look at, first of all, a rotate left and a rotate right instructions. So we'll go through the several instructions within the bricks that, that involve shifting. So the first uh, rung of my ladder here basically moves a 1 into uh, V0, which is a memory location, and it does it on the first scan. This is the system bit flag for first scan. So if the controller um, is transferred from a program to run mode, that flag will turn on for one scan. Or if the power is removed from the controller and put back on, that is on for one scan. It's a great system bit to actually uh, reset things in the controller that you need reset it upon power failure. So basically it will just move one into V0 for me. So it sets up that register. Then I rotate left. The rotate left actually rotates the bits to the left um, and it rotates it uh, the number of positions I actually indicate, which in their case here is one. So we we'll locate, uh, rotate the bits one bit to the left. So if I turn this on, and I'll just change this value, and we come up here, I'll just move this out of the way over here. So we're going to turn uh, C0 on, and when it comes on, what you'll see is now my uh, rotating bit now cycles through the bits going left. Now because it's rotate, once it gets to the end bit here, it doesn't lose it, it actually rotates it back to the beginning again. So it gives me a true rotation. Now if I turn that bit off now, and let's look at uh, C1, which is actually my uh, rotate right bit. Now my rotate right bit actually rotates the to the right now the number of bits that I want to rotate which in this case here is one as well so let's turn this on and what you'll find now is that if I look at the same memory now I'm rotating to the right again once it hits the end bit it rotates it back to the beginning again and you'll see that V0 here represents the number that's actually those bits represent so Truly, it is a number in that register. However, it's the bit that we're actually tracking along. So that's rotate left and rotate right. Now, if I turn on both bits at the same time, okay, so I have C1 uh, on. Let's go C0, and we'll turn it on. And it does exactly what we think, which should be not nothing at all. So when the PLC scan time comes down, it says rotate to the left. Then the very next scan, it rotates to the right. So the end result of those two units uh, rotating um, is null and void. It just doesn't move at all. all right, so the next operation that we're going to look at is actually the math shift left operator. So here, um, we have one in V0, and I can see that up here, or V1. We'll move that down a little bit. And what we'll do is, on this math expression, um, it basically allows us in the math equation to move everything to the left by the number that's represented to the right, in our case here is one. So everything now should shift to the left by one. So if we call up C2, and we'll turn that on, C2 now starts, and you can see how now I'm shifting to the left. And when I shift to the left, and it comes to the end, it actually loses the data now. 
So everything then becomes zero and that's it for my shifting. Now if I turn that off and let's put a, uh, the one back into it again. Then what we'll do is turn this back on. And again, we have the shifting movement of that bit going through. Let's turn it off before we actually lose it. And now we'll look at the mass shift right operation. So in this case here, again, we shift bits to the right, but by one. And I'm doing this again in a math equation, and it's on memory V1. And so we'll turn on three. Turn that on. And what you'll see now is we now shift things back to the right. Again, once we go past the end, we actually lose that data. And it goes back to zero again. The next instruction is going to be our math unassigned uh, shift right. So what this will do is actually shift again to the right. However, in math, in those 16 bits, we can have a, a sign number. So that means it goes into the negatives. If that's the case, and I use that shift rotate or shift rotate, uh, or, sorry, shifting math instruction right that we previously did, and bit the largest bit was on, it would actually shift ones into that register. So in our case here, what we're going to do is we're going to write um, a one into that signed bit location, even though we're using unsigned now. And if I turn on four, it will actually operate exactly as we um, thought, and it will actually rotate to the right. And again, once it goes down past zero, it just zeroes it back out again. So you see that going down. and exactly as we thought. Now the last instructions we're going to look at is actually a shift register. Now we've covered shift registers before in a couple of different uh, uh, posts. In this particular one here we have three inputs. We have the data input coming from C5. We have our clock bit which is our ST4 which is the uh, one second and this little triangle in the instruction really means that it, it's doing a edge trigger so it's a one shot on that clock pulse. Then for C6 we have a reset which resets the bits within the shift register. In our shift register itself if I switch to the mode to uh, edit mode and we'll just uh, reduce this a little bit. You can see that I can set a range of bits in our case here, we have V3, which is a single word, or I can have a range of words and double words together. So my my shift register can be quite uh, large if I want it to be. So in this case here, we only have one word, and it's a V3. So we have 16 bits within that word. Okay, so this, I'll just take that out of edit mode here. And then what we'll do is we'll actually run this program. So again, C5. And you'll notice that the program is actually really running right now. And what it's doing is actually putting in a zero because C5 currently right now is not, um, does not have anything or it's off. So it's writing zeros into that register. And every second it's actually shifting that register over. So what we'll do is turn that binary. So we'll turn this on. And what you see is every one second pulse, I shift bits in. If I turn the input off, it shifts a zero into that same location. So what this does is as long as C5 is on, I can then see where it is. And during a time base rate, it shifts it over. So I can track information in that uh, unit. So if, um, again, I can turn it on. And again, it puts ones in there for me. You can see these going. Puts it off, shift it in. Again, it shifts zeros in. I turn it back on again, shifts it again. You notice now I'm tracking um, both times that I've turned it on, and you see the space in between. 
and this is in the units of seconds. So if this was a conveyor belt per se, we would have products tracking along the conveyor belt. I can tell exactly where those products are on that conveyor belt based on the timing of when I get these pulses through my shift register. So I'll turn that off right now. So that is the shifting instructions that are available in the Brooks PLC. Now we, like I mentioned before, we have a couple of posts prior that actually deal with shifting and shift registers. Here's our first one that was on a conveyor reject. Right now what we have is we have sensor A here which detects the height of one sensor and it actually puts a bit in here which then tracks along. Once we get over to the air blow off station it actually blows it off the um, conveyor. And that's exactly how the shift register works. If we, we also did another one which is a sorting station. And the sorting station had a few different elements. We had price coming down and depending on what it was, it would sort it into three of these chutes. The three chutes actually, we set up three different shift registers um, to track those and reject them. So here's, here's actually what it looks like. So what we'll do is we'll uh, just start, we'll see this video and it's gonna start the uh, operation. And when we do, we will start, uh, this is using factory I.O. And factory I.O. allow us to simulate um, certain aspects. So right now we see things coming down the conveyor belt. And at, depending on what it actually um, senses, it determines what slot it's going to go down into. So the green one itself, that should go all the way to the end and then be rejected and we keep count. So if you like this video, I'd like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do is help, help us out is tell a friend or colleague about the site. Now, all the links that you see and documentation can be found on our website. Again, accautomation.ca. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.